We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we're going to start painting this Kador Destroyer Heavy War Jack. And we're going to be sticking with a pretty traditional Kador scheme, lots of bright red with some black accents. But we're going to paint this guy as if he's a very worn Warjack, lots of weathering and age to his armor. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a really nice red base coat to start out with before we start to weather this guy up. Now there's lots of ways to highlight a red. The more traditional way is to use kind of oranges and yellows to make it very bright. However, since we want this guy to be highly weathered, we are going to go into a more neutral highlight. Our first step is going to be to spray this guy using corn red out of our airbrush. Now I'm just gonna put my airbrush at about a 45 degree angle and do short bursts of spray to make sure that I get a nice even controlled coat. The airbrush that I'm using is an Awada HP CS Eclipse and I'm using a Badger air compressor set to about 25 PSI. Now I want to concentrate this color on kind of the central carapace where his shoulders are. The two plates that have the spikes coming out we're actually going to paint black so I don't need to get those at all. We're going to continue this color all the way around onto the back. I'm also going to get all of the plates that come off of his legs and in between his legs and then the arm that's holding the axe is going to be red as well. Once I have everything sprayed the first time, I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat just to make sure that I get a really nice even color to start out with. Here's the Warjack after the corn red's been completely applied. Next we're going to spray a highlight with Evil Sun Scarlet to really make it a nice bright Kador red. Now I'm going to be spraying this kind of as a zenithal highlight, but a very heavy one. So I really want to concentrate this color on the places where the light would hit if the sun were shining directly above the mini. This front plate right in front of his head is going to be very important to highlight as well as the fin that goes directly back from that. The very top of his fist holding the ax. And then also the way that this was sculpted, if we're careful with how we spray, the sharp edge in this very central fin is going to block our spray slightly, which is gonna give us a very natural shadow as it goes into the rest of the shoulder. Here's the mini after the Evil Sun Scarlet's been applied. We already have a few shadows going on right now, but we are going to deepen them a little bit before we start highlighting. And we're going to use Screamer Pink to kind of create a little bit of contouring. Now I want to mix my paint with a little bit of Lamian Medium to get a really nice flow. And I'm going to apply this very lightly on this edge right where the armor plate starts to bend down. So I'm just putting some paint on my brush, applying it, then I'm quickly wiping my brush off to clean it and using that now clean brush to blend the transition and blend the paint down. So I get a really nice smooth gradient. I'm also going to apply this in the cracks between all of the plates to kind of increase the shadow and increase the differentiation between them. The same thing for these wires right here, right up against the engine stack. Here's the Warjack after the Screamer Pink has been applied. We're going to add one final darker color to add a little bit more shadow. And that's going to be Caroberg Crimson. We're going to apply a little bit of this in this gap between the armor plates. But mostly we want to put this in a little dab around all of these rivets just to make them stand out a whole lot more when we add the silver. Now I don't want to add this too heavily, but I'm not overly concerned with making sure that everything's super clean because it's going to be so heavily weathered. Actually having that slight unevenness in the shadow is just going to add to that kind of weathering that we're going to put on the mini later. Here's the destroyer after the Caroberg Crimson's been applied and allowed a chance to dry. Now that we've added those two shadows, we're going to start highlighting. The first color we're going to use to highlight is going to be Tuscore Fur. Now again, I'm going to be mixing this color with a little bit of Lamian Medium just to get a nice flow to my paint. And I'm going to be using this color to create a very thick edge highlight along all of the edges of the armor plates. 
Here's the destroyer after all of the Tusker fur has been applied. You can see I got all of the plates on the legs as well as that arm, the entire front carapace. And you can see that I'm using a little bit more earth tones to add these highlights versus something very bright and orange. These colors are slightly more desaturated and so they make things look a little bit more natural. The next highlight we're going to do is going to be with squig orange. Again, mixed with just a drop or two of Lamian Medium. And we're going to be applying this highlight in a thinner line on kind of the corners of the areas that we lined with the Tusker fur. We're not going to be covering up the entire Tusker fur. We're just going to be adding another pop of highlight in the areas that are at the very top of the mini. Can you use the side of our brush, catch the very top of the shoulder, these corners here on the fist. And then any other of these boxy edges that I want to add another hint of highlight to. Here you can see the Warjack after that second squig orange highlight. We're going to do one final super highlight using Jackaro orange. And again, this is just mixed with a little bit of Lamian medium to help things flow nicely. I'm not adding a lot of this color. I really just want to use my fine detail brush to do one final pop on the very top corners and just anywhere else that I think could use a final last highlight. And here's the destroyer with our finished basic red coat. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through and weather and beat this up a little bit, but this gives us a really nice starting point. And it was an interesting way of playing with some reds that aren't necessarily that traditional orange to yellow highlighting scheme. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I have another one where I'm going to add all the weathering elements to this Warjack in the mini Wargaming Vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't have a Vault membership already, go ahead and click the link. You can sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my tutorial as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini Wargaming Vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial, and happy Wargaming.